Hello, amazing parents. If your child is comfortable sitting on your lap while you're reading a story or watching TV, I'll show you some gentle, respectful movements that you can explore with your child to start filling in a more complete picture for their brain of how all of their body parts are connected. I like to think of each milestone as just the tip of an iceberg. It doesn't really matter which milestone you put at the very top of the iceberg of what you can see. The very tip of the iceberg or that really big milestone is what we just visually see, but underneath the surface is the support system or the framework that makes that tiny little tip of the iceberg actually happen. So my daughter was born with a rare genetic disorder and because of her disorder, she barely moved for the first six months of her life. Her brain missed out on making the connections and building a strong foundation of the iceberg to help support and help her reach those tip of the iceberg moments, those big milestones. Using slow, gentle, respectful movements, you can help to start to fill in any missing gaps that your child's brain just simply might have because of their diagnosis. The more connections your child's brain has between each of their body parts, the stronger the foundation. Now here's the tricky part, is that we can't force our children to make these connections between their body parts. That's like trying to mechanically fix a car. Our children are not cars. We can't mechanically fix them to make those connections in their own body, in their own experience. But we can create the ideal conditions for their brains to have learning moments. So that's what I'm going to show you today is how to create a learning moment in an everyday moment that you probably are already doing with your child, such as having them sit on your lap, reading a book or watching TV. We can take this slice of an everyday moment and turn it into a rich experience for their brain to gather up extra information and start making extra connections. Now, if your child is not comfortable sitting in your lap, then it is simply not an ideal condition for their brain to learn anything new. Now there's lots of other guided videos that I have that you can explore with your child in a different, more safer position for them, such as lying on their back or lying on their side. And you can find those inside the Mindful Movement program. So who am I? I'm Jen Stewart. I'm an Anat Vanyal Method practitioner in beautiful Chilliwack, BC, Canada. I hope you get inspired by some of these movements of simple things that you can do right at home with your child to deepen your connection with them and deepen their connection with themselves. So let's get started. Before I show you the movements with the child, I'm actually gonna get you as parents to try the movement so you can internally feel it yourself. The greater sense of awareness that you have with your own body will transfer that to your child. So find a spot for yourself on the floor where you're comfortable, or you can also do this in a chair as well. And in a sitting position, simply take a look up towards the ceiling, nice and slow, and then simply take a look down towards the floor. Now do this movement extremely slow because slow grabs the brain's attention and only go as far as is comfortable for you. We don't want to feel a stretch or a strain. We're simply getting curious about hmm, how do you take a look down and how do you organize your body to take a look up? So when you're looking up and slowly looking down, just notice what part of you is moving. Now maybe you only feel this part of your neck moving up and down, which is kind of what I'm feeling. I'm only feeling this little section here, the top parts of my vertebrae moving as I look down and as I look up. And just notice what's true for you. Now we're gonna use our hands to bring our brain's attention to a different body part to help our brain make the connection of the movement of looking up and down to shine a spotlight on a different body part to sort of wake up that body part to our brain, to remind our brains that, hey, you have a different body part that might be able to move as we're looking up and down. So with your soft, gentle hands, you can place them somewhere on your chest that's comfortable for you. So this is a comfortable spot for me. You notice where it's comfortable for you. And in this position here, simply take a slow look down to the floor and a slow look up towards the ceiling and notice and feel, is there more of your body moving? Is there something different about how your brain is organizing this movement? Is there another body part waking up because you brought gentle awareness through your touch? Maybe you feel your sternum sliding down as you're looking down, sliding up as you're looking up. Maybe more of your spine is moving. 
Maybe there's some ribs moving. Whatever is true for you, just notice. And then you can just rest for a moment. And now use your soft, gentle hands to place them on your ribs. So I'm gonna put one hand underneath my armpit here to feel the ribs on the side here, just wherever it's comfortable for you. And I'm gonna place the other hand on the opposite side. So I'm kind of giving myself a hug, but I'm feeling these ribs here and I'm kind of saying, hello, I'm reminding my brain that I have ribs here on this side. My hands are gentle, light, and in this position here, take a look down towards the floor in between your legs and gently up towards the ceiling. And just notice what's different about this movement. What do you feel moving now? Maybe more of those ribs. Is your brain aware that you have these ribs that can move like an accordion up and down, expanding and contracting? Maybe you can feel more of your vertebrae moving. Maybe you're looking further with more ease. Whatever's true for you, just notice. Get curious about what you feel, and then you can just let it go and rest for a moment. And then you can take your soft, gentle hands again and place them on your hip bones. So find your hip bones, just place your hands on your hips there like this. Don't dig in. We're using soft, gentle hands to shine a spotlight for our brain that says, hey, you have a hip right here, you have a pelvis, maybe it can be a part of the movement. Let's find out and explore. So with your hands gently on your hips, take a slow look down towards the floor and slowly take a look up towards the ceiling. And feel, what do you feel that's different now? Because your hands are in a different place. Your brain's attention is now in a different spot. Do you feel any movement in your pelvis, in your lower spine? What's true for you? Is more of your spine waking up to the possibility that it can help you with this movement? Can you feel the rolling of your pelvis? As you look downwards, you might feel more pressure onto your tailbone. And as you look upwards, you might feel your tailbone rolling out and sticking outwards. So the weight of your tush is shifting forward as you look up and as you look down, the weight of your tush might be rolling backwards more onto your tailbone. That's a possibility. And that's great. You can let that go and just rest for a moment. And then simply take a look down towards the floor and up towards the ceiling. And just notice now, what do you feel? How much more of your spine are you using to do the movement? How is your brain coordinated all of these body parts, was your brain able to connect a fuller picture of your entire body to help you with this simple movement of looking up and down? And if you noticed a difference, congratulations, you just experienced brain plasticity in action in real time. Your brain was able to take in that quality information and reorganize it unique for your own body and turn it into something useful. You were able to look up and down with more comfort ease with less effort and that's what we want for our kids for our kids to be able to move with better balance better coordination more ease less effort and have more options so let's transfer some of these slow gentle movements to help your child's brain access more and more of their body parts as well so if you're sitting in a chair or a couch they could just simply be sitting on your legs if your child is too big to sit on your lap now you can have them sitting on the floor in between your legs like this so their back is up against your chest and they can feel nice and supported this way so again only do this if your child is comfortable in this position if they're not comfortable in this position then their brain just simply won't be learning anything new there are many, many other movements that you can explore in a safer position that's unique for your child. You can take a look inside the Mindful Movement Program or just contact me and I can direct you to those movements. So with your child comfortable in your lap, and if you have a book or an interesting toy, you can gently and slowly guide them into the first reference movements of simply taking a look up and taking a look down. Now, I don't like to go too far with kids doing this. So again, the brain really likes slow, the brain loves gentle and the brain loves subtle. So the smaller, slower, gentler the movements are, the more their brain is gonna actually get out of this. So I like to use a book or a toy to just slowly go a little bit up and a little bit down. 
and just notice if your child is following the book a little bit up and a little bit down and what parts of them move to take a look at the book as it goes up and what parts of them move as they take a look down at the book. And you might notice that they're doing something similar that you did just using their neck like this. So just notice, observe, get curious about it. Notice what you feel up against your chest as they're taking a look up and down. And now we're gonna use our soft, gentle hands to shine a spotlight for their brain to say, hey, here's a body part that might have a possibility. We're gonna help their brains start to make connections between their different body parts. So with very gentle hands, you can place your hands gently on their chest. Just be careful not to go up too high. You don't wanna hit the throat area at all. So keep it down below the collarbones and not too low either because sometimes it doesn't feel very good underneath the ribs. So somewhere in here, gentle fingers just resting right there shining a spotlight for their brain that hey, you have a chest right here. And in this position here, you can gently bring the toy a little bit up and a little bit down. Now I like to have my hand on their chest and I also like to be moving my own body with the movement as well. So they're getting feedback from in front, the hand in front, but also from my body behind. So as I look down with the book, they're feeling my whole body moving behind them and as I bring the book up, I'm looking up as well, and they're feeling the soft, gentle hand in front and my supportive body behind them moving as well. So down and up, super gentle and super slow. And notice if anything feels different, if anything's changing. Of course, take your cues from your child if they need to take a break, etc. do that. And then we can take our soft, gentle hands, slip them underneath their armpits here, and just gently feel if you can feel any ribs there. Keep your hands soft and gentle. Again, it's like a shining a little spotlight for their brain to pay attention to this area here. We're not forcing anything. We're not mechanically moving anything. We're just basically saying, hey, there's some ribs here over here. Isn't that interesting? And in this position here, you can guide the book a little bit down for them to look down and a little bit up to look up. And you can feel under your hand, is anything else moving? Is anything different? And as you bring the book down, I'm also using my body to curl down as well. So the brain has that double input of the gentle hand on their ribs, as well as my body curving down, my body curving behind them as we look up and as we look down. And then the last variation, you can take your hand, um, put, them, put it on their hip bone right here, and as we both take a look at the book that's moving down, I'm going to actively think of rolling my pelvis back. So like before, when you felt rolling onto your tailbone, we're going to take a look down, rolling onto our tailbone. And then as we look upwards, I'm going to roll my pelvis forward. Again, I'm not using my hands to mechanically move her pelvis in any direction. It's more like just a reminder to her brain that, hey, there's a body part here. What's going on with it? Hmm, it could move, it might not move. The movement isn't really the point. The point is to make the connection to the brain that, hey, you have a pelvis. The point is really in the possibility. So gentle hand on the hip, rolling your own pelvis backwards as we look down, rolling your pelvis forward as you look up, keeping it nice and slow and gentle. And you can just let that go, read a few pages, see if maybe their bodies are moving a little bit different, and then you can go back to the original movement of simply looking a little bit down and looking a little bit up and just noticing if it's different. Does it feel different? Is there a little bit more movement in your child? Is there a little bit better head control? Do they have a little bit more stability? Is more of their spine moving? So hopefully this gives you a few ideas of what you can do to start filling in some of those gaps that your child's brain just simply might be missing through slow, gentle movements in your everyday life. I would love to know what changes you noticed, and I can't wait for you to watch the next video. We'll see you in the next video.